You are listening to the Kingdom Masterclass Podcast, where business and the anointing flow together to build God's kingdom. To stay connected, visit podcast.z5info.com. Man, what a, what a great day today. It's really good to see everyone. Uh, man, God is good. God is good. Has God been good with you? I mean, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. I can, I can, I can see, uh, you know, the hand of God on your life. I can see the blessing. I can see, I can see, you know, the hunger. And you know, what a, what a. There's nothing better than being hungry for the good things. You know, you know, because whoever, you know, hungers after righteousness, you know, he shall be filled. And so, you know, what a great example to have my friend, you know, Eddie over here, and and my other friend, which. You know, I'm really good with names. Alejandro. You know, my friend Alejandro here, they drove all the way from Miami, you know. So let's give it up for that again. Man, Alejandro, my goodness, so good to see you. You know, when you, when you, you, when you begin to just uh, do, you know, move by the Holy Ghost and just really love people, you begin to encounter treasure all over the world. You encounter treasure everywhere you go because God's always looking for people's hearts. You know, a lot of people are very superficial and they can o- they're always looking about what you can get out of people. But when you, your perspective is what's the value that you can add to them, everything changes. You know, it's always about, you know, looking and adding value. And when you're always looking about adding value, you'll never be disappointed, you know, because then whenever you add value, that's whenever you can truly extract the best out of people. And so, you know, people can feel it. People know, people know when you're after, you know, uh, you know, your own motives or when you're after, after God's motives, you know, and so it's a big difference between having your own agenda you know, what you want to do. That's why you should not have an agenda. You should have God's agenda always in you. And God's agenda is always reaching out to people, always loving on people. Because, you know, that's, that's the power that we carry. That's the power that we carry. We, ca- we carry the power to impact people's lives. And that's the greatest power you could have, you know. And so when you begin to do that, you can begin, you actually begin to build true, true relationships. And when you build true relationships, then, then you have a foundation to build something great, you know. And, and it's not something great for you. It's not something great for, for your own benefit. But it's the great, for the greater good, which is God's plan and purpose for people's lives. And so, you know, I, I begin to realize that everything that we do is to add value to other people's lives. Because what you ultimately want, you know, and I'll give you a, a key, a very important key. Ultimately, what you want is you want God's perfect plan and purpose to be alive and activated in someone's life. That should be the only thing that you want. And in that, you come in with the right heart to be able to add value in someone's life. And so, you know, for us, it's been so amazing. You know, we have, you know, a lot of people online watching. We have somebody in the middle of, I think, Indiana, which Mike, Mike is, is, is a business owner that I've been working for a while. And so he's here now. We have a lot of business people that are, you know, um, being part of this meetings, and, and that just shows, you know, that everybody's interested to take their life to the next level, you know, and you're never too good, you're never too wise to receive what God has for you. You're never too good, you never have everything to receive, because God has more, and as you open yourself to receive what He has, He will give you more, and more, and more, and so, you know, life, life is always, uh, life is supposed to always be you know, uh, uh, ever grow, ever ever growing, it's ever ever expanding, and the way that you do that is just keeping yourself humble, knowing that God is not done with you. God has not done with you, and He is building the greatest character that you could ever have, so you can receive and sustain all the blessings that He has for you. And so patience endures character. You know, that's why you need to be patient because God is building the character that is going to actually withstand what he's going to give you. It's, it's very, very important that you, you know that. And, you know, uh, when you are really, truly uh, after, after God's plan and purpose for your life, then God has a supernatural way to bring all the things out to you. You know, patience builds a magnet of blessing inside of you. 
patient, you know, builds the character. When you begin, like, to build that character, you know, patience and the character, what you're actually building is a magnet for the supernatural blessings that begins to rush to you, and you don't have to rush at them anymore. Because whenever you're in patience, you're running after everything that you're looking for. But if you are patient, then God begins to build a magnet inside of you. And it says that the blessing will chase you and then overtake you. Come on. Come on. Come on, would you receive that today? Yeah. And so it's such, such of a, a, a wonderful thing to have a foundation in the Word of God. Because at the end of the day, it's what fills your heart to actually be after the right thing. And when you're after the one right thing, everything else rushes your way. Everything else. And so, you know, God's building that character in you. And, and look, you know, a lot of us, you know, sometimes get stuck in our heads, you know, and get stuck in our, in our emotions. But when you have a foundation in the Word of God is the quickest way to not be in your emotions. When you have the foundation, that's the quickest way not to be in your emotions. And so, you know, for us, you know, we continue to move, to move the needle because moving the needle means loving people. That's what it ultimately means. And, and the way that you do it is that you have a firm foundation and you begin to fill yourself with principles, with the love, with the power of God. Because at the end of the day, we carry the power of God inside of us. And that's what's going to change somebody's lives. People don't change people. The power of God changes people. The word of God changes people. And so if you are stuck trying to change somebody, you cannot change anybody. You got to fill with the power that can change everybody. And that's the power of God in your life. That's the call and the purpose off of it. Everybody that goes to this big self-help, uh, you know, conferences and everything, it, everybody has, you know, grab principles from the Word of God, take the name out of God out of it and give it to people. And guess what? Still works. But it only works to a measure, not the full measure. You know, it's only the name of Jesus that will bring you the full measure. Can you say amen? It's only the name of Jesus that will give you the full measure of what God has promised you. Because Jesus is the one that gave you the full access to the Father. Without Jesus, you cannot access to the fullness of things. You know, and, and then you can go and you can receive all of these things and, you know, all of these great things. But unless you have a foundation of understanding who is the one that gives you the access to every single good thing in your life, you won't be able to, to really access the fullness of God. You know, a lot of people are always like, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But there is something that is always missing because the name of Jesus is the only one that can fill it out. Because that's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. And so you, your goal in life should be to get to know every single thing that He taught us. You know, so we can live a life of victory. So we can live a life of overcoming. So we can live a life. So we can be a magnet for blessing. In the magnet of blessing, I'm telling you, everybody thinks, oh man, I want, I want a business. I want a house. I want the cars. The blessings are people. That's, right. That's the blessing. Come on, get, that's the people. People are actually the blessing. What does a business come through? Through a man. You know, what is a, you know, cars, through, through people. But so if you focus for, uh, on what's going to move the needle in the kingdom of heaven, it'll move the needle here on earth. And so, you know, to us, it's, it's, it's so amazing what God continues to do. It's so amazing. And it, it seems like it only gets faster and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, we have, uh, you know, uh, a gentleman, you know, we, you know, uh, we actually uh, had, you know, for a long time, we, we were uh, planning an opening in New Jersey. You know, obviously, the, the change for some five needed to happen. And this is a very important for business, guys, you know. You know, for the longest time, we wanted to open in New Jersey, and we wanted to open in all of this, uh, these places. And so, but it didn't, uh, it didn't happen until we changed the name to Zone 5, you know? And so what happens is, is you know, a lot of the steps that you got to take, it's the steps of boldness, not because of your own benefit, but because of somebody else's benefit. Because yeah. if you're not making the right decision today, you're not only hindering you, but you're hindering everybody else. And so, you know, for, for, you know, for us is, you know, I've, I got to now talk to all of these people that run the finances and everything. And now and I'm in a position to be able to talk to all of them. 
And, you know, we have the, the guy that runs, that gives us all the money for, you know, you know, one of the heads of the financing company that gives us, you know, um, you know, all of the lending. And, you know, I remember we're here. Actually, I was going to uh, meet with uh, Mr. No, which give it a hand. He's come all the way from Alabama. Come on. <laughs> something's happening. Come on. Something's happening. I'm telling you, you know, a lot of the things that the hungry, uh, uh, the hungry people will travel. You just got to make sure that when you're, you're, when you're close, you don't settle, yeah. you know, because the proximity could, could make you settle. The proximity could make you uh, just being comfortable, you know, and, and comfortability will never, will never bring growth in your life. And so, you know, that's why we're always constant uh, on the moving. You know, I have a lot of people that work with us. And then we're constantly on the move. Not to do our own agenda, but to do God's agenda. Amen. You know, we're constant. we don't move unless the Lord tells us to move. We don't connect unless the Lord te doesn't tell us to connect. And at the end of the day, if you love people, then you, you know how to connect with people, whether people are willing to receive or not. And you don't have an agenda to go to tell people what to do. You go and uh, have an agenda to show the love of God to people. Amen. You know, and that's what's going to bring all men to repentance. That's what, that's what, you know, brings everybody to the kingdom. The Bible says that, you know, if the name of Jesus be lifted high, I'll draw all men unto you. And so if you're always just on that perspective, not your own way, you know, not your own way, but his way, people are going to begin to come around. And so, you know, I remember, you know, I just chatted with him and he was like, yeah, you know, I, he wanted to really, vis he said he wanted to come visit me. And this is a guy that writes all the finances. You know, they're usually finances guys that give you all the money. They're not waiting for you. You know what I mean? You usually are waiting for them. But, you know, he said that he was sitting in the parking lot and he said that he couldn't move. And he said, I just got to sit here until I get a text message. And so I didn't know. I didn't know, obviously. But, you know, I was like, I really fell on my like, hey, man. You know, uh, I'm here in my, office, in my office, and he was like, yeah, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'm like, were you stalking me? And I'm like, he was like, yeah, I was around the corner, you know. It's just... But, you know, people don't know why they're hungry. You got to tell them why they're hungry. You know, you got to tell them why they're hungry. You know, people don't know. People think I'm like, you know, it was just a thing. No, it was the Lord orchestrating everything for you. It was the Lord just completely orchestrating everything for you. And so I remember he came, and, and man, that, that sprint event has been a blessing for us, you know? Because, you know, I get, I, get, I get people to sit right in front of me, you know? Victoria is like, yeah, it's been a blessing, you know? Because I took some of the guys in the sprinter van, and, you know, uh, but, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, I don't even get anything unless I know it has a purpose, you know? Uh, everything, everything that you enjoy has a purpose, doesn't it? Everything that you get and you have has a purpose. So, I mean, if, you know, that's why people, a lot of people, you buy shoes and you buy everything. And you're like, oh, whatever, you know, but everything that you buy that has a purpose, you know? I buy shoes so I can give shoes. I think I've sown over 300 pairs in the last year. And that are, so I'm never going to run out of shoes, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I, whatever you sow, you shall reap. Right. And so I remember that he came and, and he just sat in front of me. And, and the great, great thing about that sprinter event is that you have him right in front of you, Like he cannot go anywhere. And I'm like, and I had Jason lock the door, bro. This guy's not going to get out. <laughs> you have him right in front of you. Right. And then the door is locked. And that guy got some really nice music in the background, you know what I mean? <laughs> the guy's glued to the seat now. And so, man, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you feel the power of God? Man, this is a different meaning, right, Alejandro? This is a little different, right? This is not how sales meetings should go. <laughs> man, I feel the power of God. My goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Man. So, uh, you know, you know, when you step in, in God's and in, 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 in the Holy Ghost, that's you receive everything that you need when you receive when you step into the anointing into God's perfect plan. The anointing is is God's perfect plan for you. The anointing is is what gives you, you know, when you step into the spirit, you, you step into the anointing and that's per, God's perfect plan for you. You know, and so, you know, everything you, you lack nothing, you know, because everything is he already provided, you know. 
And so, um, and so it's so powerful. It's so powerful because I had him right in front of me, and, you know, uh, he was just there. And, you know, it's so important that you have the right intentions in your heart because whenever you have the right intentions in your heart and you don't have an agenda, that's when the Holy Ghost begins to move. Because if not, you're going to have to begin to speak to make things happen. And you don't want to make anything happen. You want to be led by the Holy Ghost. You want to be led by the Holy Ghost. You want to be led by the Holy Ghost every time. And so, you know, to me, you know, what has always moved is the love for people. Because I know where they're at. If you understand where people are at, you're going to love them. You're not going to judge them. You know, you're going to love them. You're not going to judge them. You're going to come and you're going to be able to speak encouragement. And, you, and then when you speak life into them, then their hearts are open to receive the Lord. You know, because it's the work of the Holy Ghost and, and the love of God who brings men to repentance. And so, uh, you know, we opened up. And I mean, this is so amazing because this is how we're doing business now, you know. Isn't that amazing? This is just the best. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. You know, that's literally God's business. Going after men's soul with the love of God. That's what God's business is. I'm about my father's business. I'm about my father's business. This is my father's business. This is the business that I am in. And as I pursue his business, God will open every door for me. So I have more than enough in the natural. Come on, more than enough in the natural. You know, I know what pleases him. I know what he's happy about. And so, you know, I, I chatted with him and he's right in front of me. And I just begin to just speak by the Holy Ghost because I know, you know, when you speak by the Holy Ghost, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a, a rebuke, if, it's, if, it's, if you, you're single things out. The, it's going to come out with love and people are going to receive it because that's what they need, you know. A lot of people, you know, if you, if you correct people and you do it in love, they'll receive it, right. you know. And, and, then, and then people are going to be like, this is what I needed, you know. And so, you know, I, I, at the end of the day, I just begin to just share with them how much God loved them and how much of an important position he was in. And that he was in a place that he was about to make a lot of decisions that were going to affect a lot of people. But the God wanted to guide him through it that he didn't have to worry about it. And they said, if you let God guide you and, and through the decisions that you're about to make, I said, he's going to lead you in the right direction. He's not going to let you down. And so, you know, I remember I just shared with him that the, the God loved him and that he had a great plan of his life. And, and then I said, and then if you want to receive Jesus in your life, in your heart as your Lord and Savior, he will be the ultimate one that will help you to make every good decision. You just got to yield to him. And, and you know, he said, yes, I would like to do that. I, I, I would like to do that, you know. This is what he said, I would like to do that. People are ready to receive the answer. Let me say that again. People are ready to receive the answer for what they're going through. And you carry it inside of you. You carry it inside of you. People are ready to do that. And so, you know, I remember I led him into the prayer of salvation, and he got hit with the Holy Ghost. He said, oh, what is this? Oh, what is this? <laughs> he said, oh, my goodness. And he's like, what is this? And I said, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. You're not only receiving Jesus, but you're receiving the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Because receiving Jesus is the way. The Holy Ghost is the empowerment to do what the task ahead of you. There is a supernatural power that has to come into your life to be able to do God's perfect will. That's God's perfect will. God's perfect will. God's perfect will for your life. So there is a supernatural, a supernatural anointing that comes upon your life. That supernatural grace for the task ahead. And I'm telling you, God's going to empower people today to live that supernatural life in the name of Jesus. You know, if you're here today, there's not by a coincidence. God is empowering every single one of you. And all you need to do is you just need to be hungry and humble. And pressing in was, was one of the words that I, didn't, I, I disliked the most. But it's one of the things that I like the most now. You got to press in. You got to press in. You got to press in. And so, you know, I re, you know, I remember he just got hit with the Holy Ghost because there is big decisions ahead. And the big decisions ahead you cannot make without the Holy Ghost. There is big decisions ahead that you cannot make without the Holy Ghost. 
And so he immediately got, got touched. And, you know, I remember he came in and, you know, he was kind of like, you know, you know kind of startled about the whole thing. What you need to understand is change happened uh, immediately is the fruit that takes time. You know, so, you know, somebody, somebody, you know, comes and receives Jesus, then there's a lot of, there's a process that they need to walk through that God's going to burn all of these things out of the people. That's why the disciples received the power of the Holy Ghost through fire and Jesus got it through a dove. There was nothing to burn off of Jesus. Nothing. There was nothing. But it came upon the disciples because it needed to burn everything out of them as a fire. Because the whole, the power of the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus as a dove. There was nothing to burn. He was perfect. He was perfect. He was perfect. Jesus was perfect. And then whenever the 120 received the empowerment of the Holy Ghost, it came as a flame of fire because they needed to be purified. There were things that needed to burn. There were things that needed to burn and get out and be completely transformed. That only the fire, there's only things that can be transformed and changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way that the fire of God comes upon your life and he's going to burn all of the things. And then you need to let him do now those things so he burns all of your own works and you begin to do God's work. That's why the power of the Holy Ghost begins to burn and burn and burn everything in your life. Because there, your actions have to be, you know, presentable in front of God. Not every action is accepted. Only the action that is led by the Holy Ghost is the one that will be accepted. And so that's why, you know, God begins to really change and transform and burn things out of you and in you. Because that's, he wants you to walk in God's perfect will. And when the fire of God comes, it begins to burn all of the flesh, all of the feelings, all of the thoughts that you have. And he begins to just keep you, you know, burn everything out so you can only focus on what matters. Which is God's presence. You know? And in every decision that you take, God's presence, God's peace is there with you. Can you say amen? amen. Man, this is, I mean, you know, I know the Holy Ghost is always moving. But when people are hungry, when people are hungry, that's when revival happens. When people are hungry, that's when revival happens. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and I've been saying this for a while, that there are people that are coming from all over that are going to come and receive. Because the, the place of business is we got to teach people what is actually the business that we're in. And every single business, every single talent, every single gift that God has given you is for his business. And as you put God's business in your main focus, everything else is going to work around you. His main focus, his main purpose, you know. And so when you seek God's kingdom first, then everything else opens. Because I pray for the financing guy. And the next thing that he does, and he calls me and he said, I have every single installer of the United States. And I want to give him to you. I want to give it. I want to give every single one of you. And he said, I know who is the best because we, we underwrite almost 40, 50% of all the loans in the United States. I know every single one of them. So in a blink of an eye, New Jersey was open with one phone call. And they're going to make their first sale next week. Come on. In a blink of an eye, Texas was open. And we're going to go and talk out their business in the next two weeks. Come on. We're going to build a team out there. I'm going to be meeting with Joy's dad in the couple of next weeks. You know, because, you know, he, he, he was... Uh, look, you never know. You always are got to be a blessing. He was a blessing to me at the beginning. And now I get to be a blessing to him. You know, that's, that's what you are. That's why you got to continue to do the right thing. You got to. It is your responsibility. It doesn't matter whatever people do, whether you're disappointed, whether people play behind your back, whether people, you know, made a mistake, whether you got backstabbed. It doesn't matter. You must continue to do the right thing because whenever they're ready, you'll be ready to help them. Amen. That's the heart. It's not so, oh, let me show these people off. No, I'm going to keep doing the right thing because at the right time, everybody will come up and we'll be able to help them. 
And so, you know, uh, you know, New Jersey opened up, Texas opened up, and every single state in, in the United States has opened up for us. You know? And so, and so it's, it's so powerful. It's so powerful what we're doing. And then we, uh, you know, we're going to be, we're going to go to New Jersey uh, and just set up the office out there really quickly. And everything happened at the right time. We have another gentleman, which uh, has a, a, a church in the middle of New York, you know, right uh, 10 minutes from Times Square. And he called me and he said, I, you know, I've been waiting to work for you, with you for the last two years. And I think this is the time to do it. And so now what this is going to turn into is we're going to do, uh, he has a, a, a Bible school in Poland, right? And, and so he says that, you know, he wants to do uh, a class to talk to them, you know, and I'm going to be speaking to them in Poland through a Zoom call. And, and now we're going to connect Poland, you know, to the Tuesday meetings. Come on. God is so good. You focus on the one thing. And then Germany is also, you know, uh, you know, David, my friend David is flying in. So he can add Germany also to the Tuesday calls, yeah. you know. So, so, I mean, you could, be, you could be limited on what's in front of you. You can put your eyes on the Lord and you can let him do what he's going to do. Amen. You know, I spoke along the lines of, of disappointment last week. But you'll never be disappointed when all your expectations are on the Lord. Amen. Whenever people come and give me news about things that, that didn't work out, I'm like, I'm excited because I'm about to find the way that God's going to work it out. Amen. God's going to work it out. Amen. So every time you hit a roadblock, if your expectation is on that roadblock, you'll stay there. But if your expectation is on the Lord, you're going to jump right through it into what God has for you. Into what, into what God has for you. You know, aren't you excited? You know? Thank the Lord. So, you know, I'm, you know, all of these things begin to really, you know, take such of a reality. And, and, you know, Pastor Rodney was talking along the lines of continue to speak life, continue to speak the word of God, that everything was going to happen. And, and, you know, that's part of also what, you know, what we were sharing. And it's not about I'm sharing the same things as we're in the same spirit. You know, and then you, whenever you are connected, you're aligned exactly. You're talking the same things because it's not your thing. It's a Holy Ghost thing. Yeah. And so if everybody gets in the same wavelength of the Holy Ghost, we're seeing the same things. We're speaking the same things. And it could be indifferent. You know, that's why I talk to people from Poland and Germany. And it's an immediate connection because we're not getting in each other's page. We're getting on the Holy Ghost page. And that's what makes unity. That's what ultimately unity is. And then you got to teach people how to follow the Holy Ghost. And that doesn't happen unless you have a firm foundation of the Word of God. You got to have a firm foundation on the Word of God. And so for all, uh, you know, for what the Lord continues to do and what he's doing, you know, there is a specific assignment for, for each one of you. And each one of you have a perfect you know, a perfect way that God wants you to do what he has called you to do. And a lot of the times that doesn't happen unless you lined up 100%. You got to line up 100%. A lot of people have so many things in their mind and, and they, 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 they want to make happen what they are. They, they want to make happen what they want to do for the Lord that they want the Lord showing them the way that they're supposed to do. Like, people are really after, like, I got to do all of these things for the Lord. I've never, I don't think about all of the things that I have to do for the Lord. I just line up according to his word, and he takes me there. Because I don't want business more than I want the Lord. I don't want ministry more than I want the Lord. I don't want the projects that God has for me more than I want the Lord. And that's when people go wrong, and that's whenever people are in a perpetual stock. But you're called to be in a perpetual blessing. You're called to be in a perpetual blessing. And so, you know, it's very important that you realize that, that everybody is, is, is an eternal bottle to make something happen for the Lord. The Lord did not call you to do that. The Lord will call your bottle, will fight your bottle. All you are supposed to do is to be obedient. Amen. That is your greatest sacrifice, obedience. That is your, the hardest work that you could ever do is to be obedient to what God has called you to do. And you cannot do that when your foundation is broken. And so that's why we focus so much on foundation, on what God has done over here. And you know, does, does success happen over time? 
Yes, after 10 years, after seven years, after you being put, build a foundation. A lot of people, you know, want to live in this supernatural spirit without having a foundation. You cannot do that. You got to have a strong foundation and then you gotta, you, you're able to flow with the Holy Ghost. Because if not, you'll be a balloon that will just go anywhere without a foundation. You got to build something to be able to, you know, to actually, you know, you know, get the wind of heaven behind you. you. You know, there is foundations that have to be built and those foundations are in the word of God in you. Whenever you feel those, the, whenever you build that foundation in your life, you're not going to be moved by your feelings or your situation or your own mindset or your own goals. That's what happens with a lot of people of why they never really achieve the call of God in their life. It's not on God, it's on them because they have failed to plug in in a place where they can get a firm foundation. You know, you could never really grow unless you've been planted in a place. And whenever the roots go deep in, in one place, that's whenever you begin to grow. And whenever you begin to grow, then you begin to get the fruit. Now, people will begin to see you when you give fruit. If you don't have fruit, people are not going to come around. It's just a tree to look at. But it's a beautiful thing when see a tree that is luscious, full of apples, a luscious, full of, you know, tangerines and everything. You got to give fruit. But if you're not planted in a place, you know, getting everything that you need, you cannot bear fruit. Now, you got to plant yourself in a place where it's good soiled. And if you don't plant yourself in a place where there is good soil, you're not going to get the nutrients that you need to grow. And that's why the Lord brought you here. So you can get everything that you need so you can grow to that level that you've never been before. You are to be planted by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is always going to bring you into a place of, of growth, of a blessing, of correction, of abundance. That's where you have to plant yourself in a place where you're going to bear much fruit. And that's led by the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, a lot of people are just moving from place to place because it doesn't fit their agenda. That's why people move so much. People move so much because it doesn't fit their agenda. And then their agenda has not produced any fruit for them. But they're trying to get the fruit out of it because people want to be recognized for the gift and their talents without being planted first. You cannot give... Be recognized for your gift and your talents unless you bear fruit. Everybody's just, look at me, look at me, look at what? It is the good fruit out of your life that other people will see and will see the goodness of God in your life. People don't want to follow turmoil. People don't want to follow confusion. People don't want to follow stubbornness. And then people wonder why it is in a perpetual place of being stuck. But God wants to put you in a perpetual place of growth amen. and blessing upon your life. Can you say amen? amen. Is this good? Yes. You know? And so that's why God begins to bring people in a place because you got to plant yourself in a place of good soil. Just like why I got planted at the river of Tampa Bay. You know, I got planted, I got rooted in, and then I began to receive and I began to get myself in order. And that's where everything came. But people want the result more than, one, more than they want the process. Like I said before, people want the carrot, they don't want the result, you know. You know, it's, it's that carrot that is, you know, in front of them. And, and you know, you got to get a character to get the carrot, you know. And so it's, it's very, very important that you do that. And so as you begin to, you know, God, God you know, when he's going to give you a next level of growth, he's going he's gonna to plant you and root at you in a place where you can receive everything that God has for you. It's, it's very important, you know. Sometimes there is, there is spots, and then the Lord changed those spots to a bigger pot, you know. So that way you can grow in the fullness. You cannot have a, you know, a big tree in a small pot, you know. And so what I'm saying, that's not, that's not for you to decide. That's for the Holy Ghost to decide. Because people, people think they got to be, you go into the bigger pot because they have a big head. You know, they, they got all of these big ambitions. And I'm just too big for all of this, bro. I'm like, just make your car payment and we'll talk about it. No, really, it's, that's, that's the truth. Because, because a humble man is always ready to listen, 
to, and that's what God does. He says, if you humble yourself, he will exalt you, right? So everything is up to us. At the end of the day is the decision that we're making. We're stuck because of us. We don't have more because of us. We have less because of us. God has already given you everything. It's just up to you to recognize it, line up with it, and God will give you what he has for you. It's very, very important. Very, very important. You know this. And so God is, you know, a lot of people have planted themselves in their own place, and that's what they're not bearing fruit. Right. You know, a lot of things that you do, you continue to move from place to place to place, and then you're not bearing any fruit. You're almost making it, but you never really made it, right. you know? And I'm like, oh, man, I made a couple of hundred thousands of dollars, and I mean, I made a million dollars. That's not really that much money, to be honest with you. You know, we're not talking about money. We're talking about supernatural abundance of heaven that has more than enough. And part of it is money, you know? Right. And so, you know, it is, it is very, very important that you, we begin to firm that firm uh, foundation, build that firm foundation, because God has more than enough for you. Right. And so as you are planted in a place the right way, then the growth is going to come, and then you, you cannot plant yourself on top of another tree either. Yeah. You know, people want to come and take the positions of somebody else. You have your own position. God's going to bless you. You're unique. You're not going to do what everybody else is doing. Your assignment is your assignment, you know? And so it is, it is, it is pretty amazing what happens whenever you, you plant yourself in a place. And then after you plant yourself in, in, in a place, you got you to gotta bear good fruit. You got to continue to put your, um, you know, plant good seeds. And so, you know, um, so, you know, we'll, we'll talk about really quick about, you know, let's go to Ecclesiastes 11, 4, 6. And this is pretty amazing. I, I found this new translation, which is easy. You know, they say that it, if, you, if you read the word of God four times a week, it says that depression lives immediately. It says that the study was that if you are reading the word of God four times a week, it says that the, the, the level of depression went down by 95%. 95%. Because the word of God is life. The word of God is life. That's what it is. You are filling up yourself with the good seed, with the good word, and it will produce good fruit. And so, you know, being in the word of God, that is going to get you out of the pressure really quick, you know. And so it says a, for, uh, a farmer who waits for the right wind will never plant any seeds. And so if he, if he always is looking for the clouds, he will never bring in his crops. We do not know the path that the wind blows along. Nor do we know how a baby's body grows inside of a pregnant woman. So nobody can explain the things that God does. He is the one who has made everything. Plant your seeds in the morning and continue to work until the evening. You do not know which seed will become strong plants. Perhaps only some of them will grow. Perhaps they will all grow. And so, you know, a farmer who waits... For the right wind will never plant any seeds. So meaning if you're waiting for the right situation to do the right thing, you're never going to get anything. You got to continue to do the right thing always. You got to continue to be speaking live. You, you know, whenever you have, you know, alternative motives or your own intentions, you kind of gauge yourself of what you're going to say or not going to say. But when you are doing what God has called you to do, you're always going to love on people. The greatest seeds that are going to be, that are going to produce growing in your life is love. Yeah. You know, that's the seed and you can be loving all the time. You can always be loving people. You know, you can always be loving. And like I said again, loving is not agreeing with uh, what everybody says. Loving is speaking the truth. Amen. That's what it is. But if you're not full of truth yourself, you're not going to know what to say. If you don't have a good fruit yourself, you're not going to know what to do. You know, and so that's why being planted is so important. It being planted in a place because you know what growth looks like. You know, by being rooted looks like, you know, what growth looks like in your life. And so, you know, you can never speak something that you don't know about. And so, you know, it says that, you know, farmers, you know, you don't, you know, a farmer that is always waiting for the right wind and the right situation to come in, he'll never have anything, you know. 
If he's always looking at the clouds, he will never bring in his crop. So he's talking about the rain. You know, the clouds, oh, is it going to rain? Is it not going to rain? Is it the perfect conditions for me to come and bring everything that God has? You don't have to do that. You just got to know that you got to be sowing by love all the time. You got to be speaking life all the time. In every situation, you can speak life. And so, you know, your works always have to go in the right direction. You always got to be sowing. You always got to be sowing. And you don't have to be waiting for any perfect situation to do it. Whether you already signed a deal or why you already didn't sign a deal. If you feel peace about it, give it all. Help. That's one of the things that I love about Pastor Rodney. He's just looking about to blessing people. That's all he wants. He, because he already knows that the harvest is going to come. You just got to, if you're selective on how you sow, you're never going to have anything back. Because that's not even the right way to do it anyway. Because you are full of your own motives. And God's not going to bless your own motives. God's going to bless his motives. You know? And so that's why people are always on the fence. Oh, man, I have all of this, but if I'll give it. Look, if you're putting your eyes on men, don't do anything. Because you're going to be disappointed 10 times out of 10. But if you're going to do things for the Lord, you got to do it all the time. Because you know you're always going to get the harvest. You're always going to get the harvest when you have your eyes on the Lord. You're always going to get harvest. You're always going to get results. And so, you know, it said, uh, you know. So, you know, you don't need to be looking for the right situation. You just got to follow the Holy Ghost and you just got to got to do what God tells you to do. You know, you will never bring your crops. You'll never bring the seed to, to be able to plant. You know, a lot of people are stuck because they think they have a lot and you really don't have anything unless you sow it. You never really have anything until you sow it. Because the seed, what is it? Say, oh, I have a seed. I have a seed. Well, you really no, don't have lemons until you put it in the ground. If you have a, a, a lemon seed in your hand and you're like, oh, I have lemons, I have lemons, you don't have anything. All you have is a seed to put into the ground that will produce all the lemons. You know, and so, you know, you got to give the best that you have always. And you don't have to be waiting all the time for the right situation to put, you know, what you have. At the end of the day, you have seeds. You have everything that you need to produce after what you want. You always have a seed. Whatever situation you're in today, you always have a seed that you can sow that will bring good fruit to your situation. It doesn't matter where you are today. You know, God, God, God gives seed to the sower. And if you're not a sower, then you got to ask for it. And that's it. And that's a lot of it. I mean, I mean, that's a lot of the time is financial. A lot of the time is what the Lord has put in your heart. You got to sow it. You got to sow it. People, you know, people give it an exchange. You know, we're not doing a transaction over here. We're either doing business by the Lord or we're not. Right. You know, we're, we are, you know, we know that our, our fruit and our reward is from the Lord. So that's why we do things together. You know, we don't work together because you got something that is going to benefit me. We are working together because we have a bigger vision to achieve. You know, and then all our gifts and our talents together will take us there. And so that's why you got to be in a place to where you always know how you need to be planting. And you don't have to be waiting for the right thing. People don't give themselves 100%. You are giving your, because you should not give yourself 100% to a person. You should give it to the Lord. And you'll be always secure there. You know, people are afraid if they put too much effort, if they put too much anything, they're going to be disappointed. You're only getting disappointed if you're doing it for somebody. Do it for the Lord. Amen. I'm giving my everything to everything I have to the Lord, and that's what I do. I'm a yes, yes, or a no, no, man. That's about it. You know, so if I'm going for it, I'm going for it. I know the Lord is going to take care of everything that I do, you know. And so, you know, if he is always looking at the clouds, he will never bring in his crops. You know, everybody's looking, is it convenient? Is it not convenient? Forget about your con convenience. You know, it has not worked out for you so far too well. It is a great time to plant yourself lined up and begin to produce fruit. You can never produce fruit unless you're planted in a place. And so I believe God is calling a lot of people to be planted in a place. I believe if, uh, if we do business, it's going to be... Is not a season. If you're here for a season, you better get out. Because whenever, uh, if you're a seasoned person, when your feelings change, then your season changed. You can clap. I know you liked it. Seasonal people are always based on feelings. 
But people that are rooted, they're always setting, you know, people are always standing established in the place where God has called them to be. You know, that's where you produce. For seasonal people, you know, uh, you know, you better get out because, you know, you, you're going to find out that it's not going to work out. And then it's better that you find out it doesn't work out sooner than later, you know, because it's not going to be well if you continue to go by your feelings, you know, by the opportunity, by, by everything that you do. And I almost, oh, I made money. I mean, people that make money don't really tell me that they make money. Right? Isn't that right? So when I hear somebody that when they come and they talk to me, the first thing that they talk to me is about, oh, I made this, I made that. I'm like, bro, this probably guy is broke right now. Yeah. <laughs> or they don't have, you know. <laughs> People that are actually are wealthy are always talking about helping, are always about building, yeah. you know. Not, not all, not all, they're always about talking a big vision, about building, you know, about principles, about helping, you know. And, and moving and moving moving forward the needle and so you know you got to you got to get all of your things all of these things out of you so you actually you actually can be humble because all of this pride is getting you to a place that you have not bear fruit at all you've not bear fruit at all and and that's fine i'll continue to listen to you a million times but you know i'm gonna keep going forward you know we're all gonna continue to move forward god wants you to experience his abundance in your life and it's all based on the, on, on the Word of God and the principles that we're talking about. And so, you know, the Word of God is, is so powerful because everything that is here, you know why people are producing and why people are not producing, you know? And you have to you have, to have you know, the Word of God very firm inside of you. We do not know the path that the wind blows along. Those who are led by the Holy Ghost are led by a wind, you know? So it's only the whole, you know, you got to be always sowing because you never know which, how is it going to be. Because God is the one that brings the growth. God is the one that builds according to what he wants. You just need to be obedient. You just need to be continually giving 100% of yourself to him. And that's why you do everything that you do. You got to give yourself 100% to him. And that's why you receive that you do. That's why I love having new people coming in. You know, I love it because, because they are the ones that are hungry and the people that have been here for a long, that gets them a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. It makes them hungry. That's why you got to continue to bring new people in. If your offices are not growing, it's because the same people that are comfortable in the same seats. That's fine. I'll continue and bring people from all over the places. You know, from Texas, Alabama, Germany, Poland. I mean, there is no shortage of people. There is 8 billion people on the planet. <laughs> Get your, get your butt out of your seat and go, go, go do God's business. Amen. And you're going to see the multiplication. Yes, sir. You're going to see the multiplication. Can you say amen? amen? You know? And so that is so powerful, you know, to really know that we do, you know, we, we do not know how God moves, but we know what we're supposed to do. And we know that the outcome is always going to be good for us. You know, and it's not for us, for you to figure it out how he does things. It's for you to figure it out what's his heart is. And his heart is for you to always be sowing good seed. That's his heart. That's a very good principle. Your job is always to speak life in any situation. Your job is to always do the right action in any situation. But if you are doing what's convenient and not convenient for you, you're still full of your own way. You're still full of your own actions. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? You know, I, I let things uh, you fall where they may fall. That's not my, my responsibility. I can only control what I do, you know? And so we do not know the path of the, how the wind blows along, nor do we know how a baby, uh, how a body grows a baby inside of a pregnant woman. I mean, a lot of people are trying to figure it out how they're going to be blessed and how everything is going to come around. You'll never know. You know, if you're thinking this is going to be how God's going to bless me, God's going to do it the 90th way, so you're just like blown away. Because his thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways, but you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be obedient. You know, you're not trying to figure it out, this whole life thing. He loves you. And that's where you need to begin to figure it out, everything out. He loves you. And he has a great plan for you. And if you let him in your life and you let the Holy Ghost guide you in the direction, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed beyond you can imagine. So you're trying to figure things out. Is all, in all, it only adds anxiety to your life and worry to your life. You're not called to figure life out. You're called to be obedient and to love the Lord. 
And as you love the Lord and as you love Jesus, then you begin to see what's the good, perfect will of God for your life. And, you know, that's how I begin to do it in business. That's how I begin to do it. I, re- I know that I am a representative of heaven and what I carry people need. And if I'm willing to represent the Lord, I'm not going to be afraid. The, pe- the reason why people don't talk to the financing people, the big people in the world is because they're afraid to lose the deal. I'm not afraid to lose anything. I already, lo- I already gave all of it to the Lord. Everything that you put in God's hands, you get to keep. Everything, everything, because it's, it's, I mean, he's protected. And, you know, you put it in your hands, he give you back something better than what, the, what you're holding on to. You know, everything that you, everything that you have in your hands, you got to give it into his hands. He'll grab it, make it a million times better, and he'll give it back to you. Can you say amen? He'll make it a million times better. This is, this is the foundation. This is the way we are to do business, guys. There is no other way to do business. We're like beginning to move in, in big areas of business. And I'm just showing you how the Lord has led us to do business. You know, and this is the way. Because unless you are, you are representing God's kingdom with all its mighty power, which is the word of God. It says that the gospel, the word of God is the power of God. Then you're not going to have power to go into him and get everything that God has for you. You know? It says that the gospel is the power of God. How are you going to enter to all of these industries with what kind of power? With the God power. That's the power that you need. You need the kind of God power to do and get everything that belongs to you. It is the God power that will take you to be bold and be a representative of heaven because for what we are contending is for the soul of men. And as you focus on God's assignment, he will give you everything you need. Everything you need. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Planes, buildings, finances, companies, houses, cars. Everything you need as you do that. That is, that is the way, ultimately, that is the call of everyone's life once they find Jesus, once they find the call of God in their life. And so this begins to really take you into another level, into another dimension. It is not yours, it is his. And, and you have to be bold to do that. You have to be bold to do that. And so, you know, we don't know how things happen. So nobody can explain the things of, uh, of, that God does. He is the one who has made everything. So if you have the one that has made everything in your life, you have nothing to worry about. Because he knows how everything works. And, you know, when I go to my mechanic, I'm not worried about what he's doing. I just know what he's doing. He has a mechanic shop, you know. He should know what he's doing, you know. (laughs) I hope so. It's his mechanic shop, you know. I'm not worried about it. You know what I mean? You run, the, the, you run the risk that he's a bad mechanic, but he knows what he's doing. If he's overcharging you, it's up to him, you know? It's up to him. And I've learned to, you know, I've learned to, you know, you, you, you get what you pay for anyway. So don't be cheap about things, you know? If you're worrying about a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks is really not your problem. There is a bigger problem than that. You know what I mean? If you're worrying about your rent, what, however, however much your rent is, you have a bigger problem than your rent. Because it's about none of that. It's about the foundation. It's about what you believe. Because when you believe the right thing, when you act the right way, when you move the right way, none of those things are your worry anymore. You know, we're trying to get people out of that, you know. And so, you know, when you go, when you go everywhere, that they have, um, you know, Walmart, they know what food they're giving you. They're giving you pretty bad food anyway. <laughs> But they know how to sell food. Don't go there, please. Believe the Lord for organic eggs. Coming very soon from the humble farm. Come on. Great news. You're not going to have to buy eggs from Walmart anymore. Come on. You don't have to buy eggs from Walmart anymore. (laughs) We got over a thousand chickens that I inspect. That I inspect on a monthly basis to make sure they're eating well, you know? Yes. And they're like, right now we have over 100, 150 eggs right now. Wow. 
And so we're going to begin to, you know, uh, the first lady is going to announce them. So all the ladies can have 100% organic ch chickens and eggs. And you're going to be able to buy them all from the humble farm. And it's a humble farm. So if you need to be humble, we're going to send you to the farm. <laughs> Some of you need to go, you know, work under the sun for a while. <laughs> we have a humble farm coming up. It's already done. We already have farm. We already have uh, chickens. You know, we're going to be uh, opening. It's right next to River Orlando. You know, we have like about six acres out there. We have six acres, and, and we got little, you know, I'm trying to get some exotic animals. I'm not trying to get too exotic out there, you know, but we'll get some baby goats. Have you seen those goats that just kind of have heart attacks? <laughs> Look, you do not want to be a goat. You want to be a little, little lamb, a little tiny lamb <laughs> that the Lord can direct. And so, you know, we, uh, you know, man, I, how did we even get into the eggs right now? You guys look hungry, though. No, I'm kidding. I know where we're at. You know? But, you know, it's, it's, it's so amazing to, to see how God begins just to bless you. Because when you really get all those barriers of your own benefit and on your own limitations out of you, and you just give 100% to the Lord, then he begins to add everything else to you. And so, so no, uh, you know, he who... He's the one who has made everything, everything, and continues to work until, uh, you know, he is the one that has done everything. Plant your seed in the morning and continue to work until the evening. So you got to, you got to always be se sowing seed every time in the morning and the afternoon and the evening. You know, I, you don't know which one is going to come forth. All you need to do is you just need to sow as many seed as you can, which is, you know, Loving, helping people, doing, speaking life in, in their life to their situation, you know, and then you don't know where the blessing is going to come from because at the end of the day, you're in God's business, right? You're doing God's business. You, your job is to continue. You never give up on well-doing because in due season, you will reap a harvest. The only reason why you stop doing the right things is because you're not getting what you wanted. Like, oh, I didn't get what I wanted. And so then that actually reveals your motive, what you wanted. You know, that, that, you know, whenever people get actually disappointed in all of this, it's because they didn't get what they wanted. And usually, not, not usually, 100% of the time is based out of self-motive, out of the flesh, out of their own mind, out of everything. I didn't get what I wanted. You know, and that's when God begins to work your will, and you have to give your will to the Lord. And so whenever you didn't get what you wanted, and then you stopped doing what's right, that's exactly the reason why you never got what you were supposed to get. Because you did it by a selfish motive you did it with the selfish thing let me just do everything but whenever I don't get the attention whenever I don't get the results that I wanted then I'm going to stop doing this must not work for me it, you are the one that is not working you're the one that is not you're not bearing good fruit you're not putting good things inside of you because when you put good things inside of you you're going to be bearing good fruit always you're always going to be bearing good fruit and so people are unhappy because of their outcomes in their life you are the farmer. You are the tree. It is up to you what you produce. You know, everybody that is in the, in the, in the same situation and it's over and over and over again, you are the one. You know, getting called out, giving a word, you know, speaking in front of people, doing everything. That doesn't mean anything unless you bear fruit. Everybody wants a microphone. But if you have no fruit, it's just like cleaning symbol. It doesn't do anything to you. Oh, brother, but there is a season. Again, there is no season. You are in a perpetual season of blessing when you lined up with the word of God. Come on. When you, it's always a blessing. You never lose. You only win. Oh, brother, you don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand how people are in the same situation over and over again. Well, I do now. I do now. It's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the mind. It's a matter of their own will on their own way. They're, 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 you know, they're Captain America on their own mind. You know, they're fighting the whole world. 
You know, I'm fighting the battle myself. I'm like, okay, bro, well, it's been five years. That battle better be over soon. You know? Oh, you know, you don't know. I'm just got all of these big things. Ah, oh, man, that's just great. Let's just focus on the little thing. Everybody has all of these big things going on, but if you don't focus on the little thing, the big thing will never happen. That's the truth. If you don't focus on the, on the little things, the big thing will never happen because a great foundation is built out of small things. And so, you know, uh, you know, and that's why we're here for, you know, we're here to speak life. We're here to kind of adjust things in your life so you can go. Everybody, I mean, I'm telling you, I've never heard so many big dreams in my life, which they're good. But the problem is, is whenever you're only focused on the big things, but you're unwilling to do the little things. I don't have a problem with big dreams. I have a problem with you not doing the little thing. Because that's usually what's going to give you the fruit so you can have the big dream. You know, it's, it's in your personal life that you begin to make all of these changes. And so, and so I love, that's why I know, you know, the Lord is bringing a lot of people from the world because at the end of the day, they just know that they're executing on the little things, you know. And then, and then the body of Christ needs to have a foundation so you can flow in the supernatural. If you don't have a foundation, you cannot flow in the supernatural. A lot of people just want to be flowing in all these, you know, realms up here, but there's no foundation. You're like a balloon. You're going to pop, you know? And so that's, the, that's one of the issues with the body of Christ, that everybody's just believing for this big thing, but there is no foundation to it because you've not focused on actually what produces fruit, you know? And so God's, he's an inspector of fruit. He, he inspects the fruit in your life, you know? And so, you know, I love whenever people, I'm telling you, people who come from the world, like they get it quickly because they, they're used to doing the practical and then you're bringing the supernatural to them, you know? And so everything that Jesus taught their disciples, it was in the practical to them. He showed them the miracles. He showed them the signs. He showed them the wonders. He showed them go fish. He didn't say, look, let's all stand here and let's call the fish. Fish came out and a million fish just floated in the air and they showered them on, over them. No, he said, go cast the net out and put it in, and then you'll see. He says, you don't have to worry about, about food, about anything. You know, the birds don't worry. The lilies of the valley don't worry. But guess what? The worms don't fall in the nest of the bird. It's not a, it's not a supernatural shower of worms. They fly, they go do what they need to do, and they get the worm. Is this good? I mean, if you're not, I mean, isn't this what's missing? Tell me, isn't this what's missing? I mean, if I don't tell you this, I don't know, I don't know how to tell you. This is kingdom business. And kingdom business has everything to do with working. And working really hard with the supernatural grace of God in your life. Where it feels like you're not worried about things. Come on. We need to pay our taxes. Watch the cloud is going to rain a bunch of gold coins. No, go fish. He went and fished and he realized, I mean, those who are fishing, you know, you, you know, you need to be patient. I don't know how people like fishing, to be honest with you. I, I don't. I don't even like to wait for the food at a restaurant. <laughs> Nevertheless, just trying to wait for a fish to come and bite the thing you know i get it you know i'm big in patience but not kind of patient you know what i mean not that one <laughs> but you know fishing is a good thing for those who like it i don't know why you like it but great i love the fish so keep bringing it <laughs> god has graced people individually i understand that's not my grace that's not my grace and I'm like, I, you know, we went fishing one time, and, and I didn't want to touch the fish, so I just caught the thing and let it loose again. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know how the fish, and my brother had it like this, and we're just kicking it like a soccer ball, you know? I did not know what to do with the fish. I don't know how to get it off the mouth. It's okay, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm confessing my sins over here. I don't know how to fish. It's all right. <laughs> Sounds fun, you know. What I mean? 
I'm not a farming guy. Let the farming guy do what he does. Jesus loves all the chickens and everybody else. You know, Jesus loves, you know, we have a guy named Jesus here. I'm not talking about Jesus, Jesus. You know, Alejandro's like, is Jesus here? Oh, my goodness. Where is he at? <laughs> you know, you empower the people to do what you're supposed to do. The problem with a lot of you is you want to do what somebody else is it, it's, it's their job to do. You just need to do your job. You know, and then and, and this mystical, you know, breakthrough. There is no mystical breakthrough. The word of God is very clear about what you need to do. Right. Really, there is very clear about what you need to do and how you need to do it. And so, you know, that's, that's how everything begins to change in our lives. You know, plant your seed in the morning and continue to work until the evening. You do not know which seed will become strong. And so that's up to you. you just, your job is to sow with a good heart every time. That's your only job. Isn't that amazing? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And, that's, and I love you, but I love God more. So that's why I'm going to put my eyes on him. You know, that's why I'm going to put the, the reward. It comes from him. And you'll never, you know, I mean, people are going to do what they're going to do, you know. And, and then, you know, that's going to allow you to get over quickly, whatever happens. I, I know you're not made out of rock, but, you know, you get over a lot quicker because your expectations was not on people. You're let down because your expectations are on people all the time. So you will be let down all the time. Wow. I'm not saying that's a free pass for you. No. As a man of God, you need to say yes, yes, and no, no. And you need to come through with what you say you're going to do. That's part of building the character. But part of building the character is putting your eyes on God first. Right. You know? And then you do, and, and you do everything as and you, you do it unto him. Meaning he's looking at you 24-7. Your partner, your boss, your friend, whoever it is, they're not looking at you 24-7. But God is. And so that's why doing it unto the Lord brings another level of accountability, another level of execution, another level of doing things right. Because now you have a higher power looking over your life, you know. And so it's, it's, it's fantastic. And then you have that supernatural power over your life. And then you lined up with whoever God has called you to work with. And, and then you are a blessing to work. You're always a blessing, you know. And being a blessing is the fact that you don't bring problems. That's not what it is. If you, if, if you need something, just ask. 99% of the time, you're going to get an answer. I mean, I'm telling you, there are people that have gone ahead of you to build something great. The problem is, is people don't want to take advice because it doesn't fit their narrative. You know, people don't take advice whenever you point everything at them. If you begin to point that the problem is everything around them, then they like it. But whenever you begin to focus on them, they're like, they get squarely. Every problem comes out of your heart. Whatever problem you're facing today, it is in your heart. It's not outside. Let me say that again. Every issue that you may have today, it comes out of your heart. It's not on the outside. You know, you know child, give me your heart because all the issues of life come from your heart. And so finances in your heart. Breakthrough in your heart. Commitment, dreams, everything, everything is in your heart. So you got to continue to allow the word of God to come in and set up a right foundation so you can begin to speak the right things. Because the only way that everything changes is when you begin to speak the right things. But you cannot get the right things coming out of your mouth unless you're prideful and you're not receiving what God wants to put in your life. Because the power of life and death is in your mouth. Any situation. If your finances are dead, speak life through your mouth and do the actions. You know, however you're feeling today. So you have to be constantly speaking life because that's what brings everything out there. You know? People sometimes are moping around and they thinking that being moping around is going to change their situation. You're just going to look dumb. That's it. I'm like, why are you not happy? Don't you have shoes on? You should be happy, you know. They're chilling in Africa with no shoes that are like dancing and doing all kinds of great things, you know. In America, there should be absolutely no reason why anybody is sad. You know, you're a wealthy person. You're in America. Smile. You got a social security number. Smile. There is a time some of us, I mean, some of you didn't have a social security number. My name was John Smith. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Now, John Smith got a good credit, okay? I, I pay my bills. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, that, it's that what brings you everything, you know? You do not know which seeds will become strong plants. Perhaps only some, perhaps only some of them will grow. Perhaps all of them will grow. 
Perhaps all of them. What about if all of them grow? That's why you never stop. And you know that, ev you know that no word comes back empty to the Lord. Every word that you speak out comes out with a result. Every single word. And so you have to know what you're saying and how you're doing and how you're speaking. You know? Then we go to uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 18, 14, which this is so powerful. The person who plants and the person who gives water both have the same purpose. So if you're part, whatever, whatever you're doing, we have the same purpose, okay? We have the same purpose, which is advancing God's kingdom. So it says the person who plants and the person who gives water both have the same purpose. God will pay each person what is right for their work. Apollos and I, which is the friends of Paul, uh, Apollos and I work together as God's servants. You know, you are, like, you are like God's field that we work in. You are also like a building that belongs to God. I am like a good builder. God has given me the job to me and he has helped me to do it well. I was the person who built a foundation. Now all the people are building on the foundation. But each person must be careful on how he builds. God has already put Jesus Christ as the only foundation of the building. So nobody can put any other foundation there. People may build on this foundation with gold, silver, and valuable stones. Or they may build on, the, uh, on, on it with wood dry grass or leaves one day God will show certainly how good each builder works is God will put will put each person's work into a fire on that great day the fire will show whether their works is good or bad if the fire does not destroy the work then the builder will receive the good thing from God my goodness this is as feeling as is straight up as it gets. This is why when you are building, you are to build anything that you build. If you don't build it on the foundation of the character of Jesus, it will not stand. On the word of God, it will not stand. And it says over here that some water and some plant seeds, but the work is the same. You know, the purpose is the same. The purpose is the same. And so, you know, God will pay each person what is right for their work. So you don't have to be worried about what anybody else is deeming your work. You have to worry about what God deems your work is. God will pay you according to your work. So you need to do the right work so God can see your work and is qualified. Because at the end of the day, he's only going to pay you for what he called you to do. He's not going to pay you for what he did not call you to do. And that's what the ever, ever wrestling, you know, life that God has. You either lean on the spirit or you lean on the flesh. And that's when you find out the perfect will of God when you lean in the spirit. If you're always wrestling, you're in your flesh. If you're flowing and you're not worried about things, you're in the spirit. Yes. <laughs> Plain and simple. Your wrestling is you. Peace, you're leaning in a supernatural power, grace that God has given you, even in the middle of the storm. I'm making it very clear for you. Wrestling, you. Spirit, peace. It's very simple. You know, whatever situation you may be wrestling for the, those all this time, it is you. You are the one that has to make it happen. You're the one that has to toil on it. When you lean on the Lord, he's the one that makes it all happy for you. And it's almost effortless because God's grace is effortless because it's his power, not your power. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say a louder amen? amen? God's power doesn't struggle, does it? You know? Lean on the Spirit with the foundation of the Word of God. Lean on the Spirit with the foundation of the Word of God. The, you know, the person who plants, the, per, the person who waters both have the same purpose. God will pay each person what is right according to their work. The only work that you're going to get paid for is what God has called you to do. And that has everything to do not with your agenda but with His agenda. A hundred percent His agenda. Apollos and I work together as God's servants. 
You don't work together as you're the men. You don't work together as you're the only one. You work together at, for God's purpose because that he is the ultimate leader at the end of the day. And so every but one finds their own place and their own part to play in the picture because you're serving God, not men. You're serving the Lord. And people struggle a lot because they're not the ones running the whole thing. That's not what God has called you to do. God has called you to be self-sufficient in him. That's, that's what's important. And so the body of Christ, the greatest move of God is going to have generals that know how to work together. Amen. That's how it's going to be. Amen. You know, an army, you know, have many generals, but they all have the same cause. They're all serving the same purpose. Right. They all, we all serve the king. Yep. And when we all align to the king's plan and purpose, then we all are in agreement of what he wants to do. And we know how to act with one another. You know, it is him, it is God who gives the assignment for everyone. And the assignment is to reach a lost and nine world, not only to get him into heaven, but to empower them in this earth to do what God has called you to do. So you can be the mighty army of God that will shine through the night and lead people into God's plan and purpose. And God's going to use business to do it. God's using business to do it. God's using business as a tool to bring a bright torch into the darkness. And God's people are going to walk in in power by the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Word of God to break into the darkness Amen. and to get people out into, into light. Amen. That's the work. That's kingdom business. That is the kingdom business. The only reason why you would be in front of big arenas, in front of big business deals, is so you represent heaven. And then that wealth will begin to come your way to build God's kingdom like it never seen before on earth. Because God's kingdom is built with unity. And unity in the Holy Ghost. And knowing that we are all serving God. So Apollos and I work together as God's servants. We all work together for God to, to serve the Lord. We all work for its ultimate servanthood. You are like God's field that we work in. So that's the people. You are like God's field. All the lost people, that's the field that we go work on. That's what he sent us in. That's why I have every financing person. That is the field that I have to work with. That is the person that God has put in front of me to work in them, to work in the field, to put the right seed in your heart, to put the right seed in people's lives. That's what we do. You know, you get a revelation that every person is a ground and what you speak in their life, whether you know or you don't know, is going to produce fruit. So you better know what you're speaking. You better know what you're saying, because that's what he's saying. He said, every single one of you is like a field that I'm working in and a field is worked and it's prepared so the good seed can come in. And it can produce fruit. That's why we're doing this. And that's why the Lord has continued to expand what we're doing. Because there is ground and this is good seed that is going in people's lives. And God wants to do the same thing for you. you got to speak good seed to be able to get good harvest. Can you say amen? amen. So it says, you know, you are like God's field that we work in. See, you cannot work by yourself. You can never do anything by yourself. You have to find a team that you work together. Some water, some, some plant, some water. But God is the one that brings the ultimate growth. And so in this time out, in this end time, God's going to bring you to work with people together for the purpose of serving the king. So a lot of people God is bringing together now the call of God because everybody's been working like a lone ranger. If you're, a, if you're a soldier, you will never go by yourself and just go start shooting at the door of the enemy. You know, there is too many Rambos out there, you know, just trying to, you know, take over the world by themselves. You're going to get shot. There is power in unity. And the ultimate, ultimate strategy to conquer an army is division. That is really what it is. That's what they're trying to do in the United States. They're putting black against white, you know, gay against straight. It has nothing to do with anything else but division. Because right. that's the way that you conquer an army. You divide them. You get them not to be in agreement. You get them to begin to fight between them. So the enemies come and chisel and come and steals everything in the blink of an eye. That division is the ultimate weapon to win a war. 
That's what it is. That's really the ultimate one. And so that's why God is bringing his people to bring, to bring an army together. But we can only get behind together if we have one purpose, one mind, and, one, and we're in agreement on who we're serving. Your job is not, more, not less important than my job. Our job is important. And God is the one that is going to reward you for it. You know? And so now we're seeing a big coalition of business coming together for a greater purpose than money. Because money is the root of all evil. The reason why the world is working the way it's world working today is because men have made money their God. And there is only one God, and, and that's the God of the armies, Jesus. And that's, the God, that's, that's who we need to get on, under. That's who we need to go after. It's the God of money that everybody has decided to go after, you know? And so for the body of Christ, you need to understand that at this time, in this hour, God is bringing the people together that are willing to work together. There is a coalition of men, a mighty man, that been, you know, ready for this time. God has had you ready for this time. God has you ready for this time. He has polished you. He has sharpened you for this time. It is you who God is going to use in this end time hour. And you just need to line up, receive the word of God in your life, and then just get with it, and you'll see things that you've never seen before. God's bringing an army together, an army together. And no one, God wishes that everybody comes in to do what he calls them to do. You know, God has given that job to me. You know, he says here that you are like a field that, that we work in. So every person that God puts you around, once you have good seed, is like a field that you get, begin to speak life into. So that God's purpose can come forth. Because we are the ones to spread the good news, the good seed, the good plan, and the purpose of God into people's lives. Nobody else does. Angels don't do it. We do it. God chose to partner up with you and I to bring God's kingdom on this earth. And as you speak that kingdom, it will become a reality. And everyone working together with one mind, one spirit, and one goal, you will see the mighty movement of God. And it will sweep the entire nation. And you'll see the last of awakening, waking everybody up. And the harvest will come. The harvest will come. The harvest will come. That's what God is realigning you. God is realigning everything in you. And, you know, there has to be an emptying, an emptying of you so he can fill you with all of his. And that's the word of God activated by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am like a good builder. You're, I am like a good builder. You are also like a building that belongs to God. You are a building that be belongs to God and it's our job to be good builders. You know, you got to build a foundation. And this is what we do. We build the foundation. That's what we speak all of these things. Because there is going to come a time that people come along us. And their job is to big the, build the building all the way up. But you cannot build a big building unless you have a good foundation. The deeper the foundation, the higher the building. And that's why we've been year after year after year speaking this. Because now there is a solid foundation where the other people can come and build on a skyscraper that has no end you know we God gave us direct access to heaven you know everybody you know back in the day everybody came in unity for their own purpose to reach heaven God has given us direct access to heaven through Jesus and so now we're building you know we're building our foundation and you're like a building that God is using to grow and everybody has a part to play so you are also like a building that belongs to God. Don't forget that you belong to God. I'm like a good builder. You must be a good builder. You're either a builder or you're either a hater. And haters usually hate because it's not happening to them what is happening to others. If you see somebody doing well, you can get good or you can get good or you can get bitter. You can get better or you can get bitter. You know, you have to be, you have to want what God is doing in your life to happen to somebody else's life. And if somebody's doing way better than you are, well, praise God because God's giving you a, a, a place to sow so you can reap what you're believing for. 
That's why God is putting in front of you people that have gone ahead of you. Because without you sowing, you'll never go anywhere. You have to sow where you want to go. So that's why God has fields that are producing good fruit where he's bringing you. That's why God is bringing all of these businesses around because we have gone ahead with the foundation of the Holy Ghost, which is what everybody needs. And then they come and they sow into it and then their business goes to the next level. But you have to be planted the right way. You have to be rooted the right way. You know? Because everybody's like, man, you have a great team and all of the people, you know, and I want to I want to learn how to do this and that. But if you just want the benefit, but you don't want the ground, then you don't really believe in the vision. You know, and so you could never get the fruit without stepping on the ground or sowing in the ground. And so I believe God has built this and I've been saying it for many years. So the foundation of kingdom business to can go to the next level because we have a lot of capable people that God's bringing around. You are a builder or you're a hater. Which one are you? You know? And so, you know, he said, I am like a good builder. God has given that job to me and he has helped me to do it well. Meaning you building God's kingdom has to be done with God's help. You cannot do it by yourself. You cannot do it with your own strength or with your own mind. He's the one that gives you the ability to be a good builder. Even Paul, one of the greatest men who ever lived a life, he was, you know, in, in, in that century, he was one of the most renowned, you know, well-taught men. And he, and he is now recognizing that it's God who's given him all the ability to do what he's called to do. And so, you know, in the world, they have that very, very present. They go around whoever is doing a good of a job and they, they learn from them. And so that's what's happening around, you know, with what God is doing here. And so, you know, I w- and he says, God has given me the job, uh, the, the job to me and he has helped me to do it well. I was the person who built the foundation. I love to be a person who builds the foundation. You know, I love to be that because you've been speaking life the entire time and then you begin to see the, the efforts. You, you begin to see the growth that has, God has bringing around. But without that growth, which is the very foundation that God is building in your life right now, you'll never see the supernatural growth. And, you know, I never really doubted what God was going to do. My job was to continue to speak faith and do what I'm supposed to do. You know, if you don't do what you're supposed to do today, tomorrow will never come. And people are to worry about the big vision instead of just focusing on what they need to do today. Today is, the, is, is your future. And so, ever, I, I mean, I knocked doors as much as you guys knocked doors. I went and, and, I mean, I had to get kicked out of the neighborhood in order for me to get out. You know you're ready whenever you're enjoying what you're doing. Whenever you're enjoying what you're doing, you're ready. When you enjoy what you're doing, then you're ready. You're ready because who's going to promote somebody that has a bad attitude about everything all the time? Who's going to promote somebody that is, is like swinging back and forth every other week until you're ready, doing, happy doing what you're doing and very fruit in what you're doing? Nothing else is going to come around because he's not ready. Those who say that are ready, I don't promote. The ones that say they're not ready, those are the ones that you're more likely to promote. You know? If you're not enjoying what you're doing, if you're not bearing fruit with what God has put in your hands right now, forget about it. You'll be there forever. And, and it, it is the proof of where you are today. You know, we're not making things up. This is, this is uh, you know, this is where a lot of people are at. You know, until you're enjoying, until you're actually bearing fruit and multiplying what you're doing, you know, you're always going to be in that same position. That's why I'm always happy. I'm always happy. I'm not a stock anywhere. I'm always growing. I'm always believing. I'm always multiplying because that's the foundation that is in me. You're not going to shake me by any news. I know God has the best news, and those aren't the news that I live by. Can you say amen? Amen. I'm not shaken by any news. I have the best news inside of me, so you cannot tell me any bad news because I already have the good news inside of me. I already have good news. I already have the good news. Oh, my tire blew up. Great. Great news. Oh, my car got repo. Great. Wonderful. The best thing that could have ever happened to you. Oh, I cannot pay rent. Awesome. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. 
People are like, what? <laughs> Everything is good. Everything works for good for those who love the Lord. You just need to love the Lord and you will have your good news. You love the Lord and you have your good result. Everything works for good for those who love the Lord. But see, I am not filled with anything else other than the good news. And people are toiling and they're working all these things in their head. You'll never work your way to heaven. Never. You'll never work yourself into God's perfect will. Only the Holy Ghost can take you there. And that's if you're willing and obedient. You not only need to be willing, but you have to be obedient. You don't only have to be obedient, but you have to be willing. Because if you're obedient with a bad attitude, nobody's going to want you around. You smell really bad when you have a bad attitude. Literally. And so when you have a bad attitude, you know, nobody wants to be around you. Nobody wants to be around you. So I'm always full of good news because I know everything works for good. Amen. And that's whenever people come and eat out of that good fruit because every time they bring to a problem, you give them a solution. Amen. Which is trust in the Lord. Love the Lord. Keep doing what you're doing. How can I get better? Keep doing what you're doing right. Amen. How can I get better? Keep doing what you're doing right. Keep doing it right every day. And then that's going to, without you even knowing, you grow like a strong tree that bears fruit. You know? You grow a lot quicker whenever you're not paying attention to everything that you're doing every day. You're just doing the right thing. You know? And then you'll see the results and the good fruit of the things that are happening in your life. Can you say amen? amen. Do you think people need to hear this? Yeah. Do you think people need to hear this is the way of doing kingdom business? Yeah. I mean, I'll give you a one, two, three quick exciting thing, and then you go out there, and then you're like, oh, my season is not there yet, you know? <laughs> I'm a seasonal person. <laughs> if I control the seasons, I'll be in 76 degrees all the time, my friend. <laughs> the season is the foundation inside of you, the Word of God, and it's good news all the time for the body of Christ. Can you say amen? amen. It is always good news for you. Whether winter, whether summer, whether fall, it's always good news. And those who believe and trust and put their eyes on the Lord, it's always good news. Always good news. I got a victory. Great. <laughs> yes. Yes. My pants ripped. Yes. You got to lose weight. Yes. <laughs> the anointing sometimes makes you uncomfortable. But nobody that was ever comfortable ever did anything great. Can you say amen? Amen. It gets you out of your comfort zone. It keeps you, it keeps you out of everything that is in you begins just to shake, begins just to like turn upside down because all of it needs to come out in order for the Lord to bring a good foundation. Can you say amen? And that's why we speak the truth because the truth will, will resonate and it's just like an antidote that goes inside that begins to turn everything upside down inside of you. Begins just to turn it upside down, upside down, and then you eventually got to puke it out. Because you got to clean your system. You got to clean your, your, your spirit. You got to clean your soul. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. He comes and he makes everything uncomfortable. So that way you just get rid of everything that is not supposed to be there. A bad symptom never ever feels good. If, if there is something that needs to come out, it's always going to feel different. He's always going to feel uncomfortable, you know? And that's what God wants to do with you. And that's what the power of the Holy Ghost does for you. That's why we allow the Holy Ghost to move in this place because he's the one that makes the work. He's the one that brings everything out. And he's the only one that has the power to break with whatever you're dealing with in your life in the name of Jesus. He's the only one who can change everything. Everything. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? Amen. 
you know, that's, that's, that's how it is designed to do. This is why we're digging deep in the foundation of what God wants to do. And that's why all of these parts are coming together. This will be the greatest year we've ever had. This, is, this will be the greatest year we've ever had. And I'm telling you, we build the foundation to where next year we will, we will grow unlimited. Next, this year is unlimited. Next year is unlimited. Every year is unlimited for you. Because if you have the word of God in you, it is always ever producing. The word of God is always ever producing. It's always ever giving good news. It's always ever bringing a solution. And because you build a foundation, now we're going to have people from all over the place to be a part off of it. And watch the businesses that are about to come. We're going to see hundreds of millions coming for the kingdom. Can you say amen? Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions coming for the kingdom. Hundreds and hundreds of millions coming for the kingdom. And this is why we have dig uh, a strong foundation. Our foundation is on the Lord. Our foundation is, is in Jesus. He is the cornerstone that we build this company with. So nothing can shake it. You know, anybody will come in, but God's word will, will always prevail. Heaven and earth will pass, but God's word will remain forever. Can you say amen? And that's why you build everything that you build on the word of God. You build it on the cornerstone, which is Jesus, which is unshakable. Because, because we are building a kingdom that has no end. We are building a kingdom that has no end. And now the will that is in heaven, it is coming down to earth. And we're going to see God's children rising up with power in every corner of the globe. God is raising up people that believe him, that trust in him, that are willing to ca carry the fire and the, and the power of the Holy Ghost. And are unashamed to be a representative of God's kingdom. And when you do that, then he'll take you to places that you've never dreamed that you could ever be. And let me tell you, that is for every person that is living listening to me today you're never too little you're never too small you're never too stuck for God to do mighty things with you if you just align your heart with his plan and his purpose can you say amen, amen. can you say amen? amen God has already put Jesus Christ as the foundation of this building God has already put Jesus Christ as the foundation of this building God has already put Jesus Christ as the foundation of this building. God has already been put as the foundation of zone 5. Can you say amen? amen? God has already been put as a foundation in every single one of you. In every single one of you, God has already put that foundation. He already set the foundation for Jesus so we can build upon his message, so we can build upon his great commission. Now other people are building on that foundation. But each one must be careful on how he builds. God has already put Jesus Christ as the only foundation of this building. If you're careful to build whatever you're building, you have to build it in a name that is, could be unshakable, and that's the name of Jesus. You know? You have to be careful how you build your life, how you build what you're doing, because if it's not in Jesus, it will not stand. It will be burned in a blink of an eye. It'll be burned in a blink of an eye. And so God has already put Jesus Christ as the foundation of this building. So nobody can put any other foundation here. No one can put any other foundation once you put Jesus Christ as your foundation. No one can build anything else. And so that's what we've done over here. We put Jesus Christ as the foundation of this building. And no one can change that. No one can change that. And you're like a building. If you put that foundation in you, no one can change that. No one can change that. No one can change it. You know, you have the foundation of Jesus Christ and it'll never be changed. People may build on this foundation with gold, silver, or valuable stones. Or they may build with wood, wood, grass, or leaves. One day, God will show clearly how good each builder, builder's work is. So when you build, you build on Jesus, you're not building on all of these things, on, on people, on, on having your own leverage of what you have in your hands. Because that's everything that looks shiny, everything that looks valuable. But when you build on Jesus, that's the only thing that will stand. 
You know, you may build based on your system and your processes. It will never take the gospel where it's supposed to be. But when you build it based on Jesus, that's why companies need to be really kingdom business companies. Because this is the foundation that we build upon. Every system, every process, everything that you put in place, it's around Jesus. It is not the foundation of your company. That's the, that's the most important thing about kingdom business. Every single thing that God's going to bring around the companies is if the foundation is Jesus. If you do it based on systems of process of your own, uh, you know, on your own mind, it will not last. Because there comes one day that God is going to burn everything that you built. And unless it was on Jesus' foundation, it will not stand. Because that's what you're ultimate look, ultimately looking for. If you ever build a company, it had to be in the foundation of Jesus. If you ever build a business, if you ever build your family, if you ever build a relationship, it has to be in the foundation of Jesus. If it's not in the foundation of Jesus, fire will rain down and there will be nothing to show for. All your good works are not going to work. Even if you have the greatest systems that Apple has, even if you have the greatest structure that you know Windows has, or all of this Coca-Cola or these big companies, if it was not based on the foundation of Jesus, it's going to burn like wood and haze. And one day, all of our works are going to be trial by fire. And this is why he's telling us how we need to build. And this is why we've been picking Tuesdays to share about the vision, to share about what God wants to do so no one forgets what is the foundation. So no one forgets what is the reason of what we're doing today. And he couldn't say it any, any, any more clear. People may build on these foundations with gold, silver, or valuable stones. Or they may build with wood, grass, or leaves. We build on the greatest foundation, which is Jesus Christ. You know, we're unashamed about it, unapologetic, because everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs forgiveness. Everybody needs peace. Everybody needs joy. Everybody needs to get rid of worry and all of these things. And the only one who can take it away from you is Jesus. He's the one that carry all of that on the cross for you. And this is why ultimately what everybody needs, whether you are a billionaire or whether you are the biggest businessman in the world, everyone needs Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. So, my, so nobody can put any other foundation. People may build on foundations with gold, silver, valuable stones. Or may build with wood, grass, or leaves. One day God will show clearly how good each builder, builder's work is. You want to be a good builder? Build on Jesus. Build on Jesus. Build on Jesus. And that's not going to make you a flaky person that is just always trying to live out there. No. Somebody that lives in Jesus bears good fruit. Bears good fruit in their life. Good fruit that people can enjoy around them. You know, the right people. And you might be hated for it as well. That's great. You know, God promised you wealth with persecution. Praise God. You're not supposed to be liked by everybody. Good news. You know, your family may not, may not uh, you know, be the happiest with you. Why? Because you're in a different spirit than, you, than they are. If you are in a different spirit, in the spirit of the Holy Ghost, what does the light have to do with darkness? You're going to stick like a sore thumb. People are going to manifest around you. People are going to hate you for it. That's what the word says. They will hate you for it. But we have overcome. We have overcome. We have the power of God, you know, on our side. And so if you're around people, if you go anywhere, it doesn't matter. You got to love the people, you know. You're not, you don't need to be expecting that everybody's just manifesting around you. Maybe they do, but, you know, you got to love people. So this is very important. This is a strong foundation. This is a strong foundation on how you build anything. And this is the ultimate way that you build the business, you know, for Jesus. Everybody is unafraid and unashamed to share what their principles that they build upon is the Christians that have withhold it. But let me tell you, God is raising you up today to be a light and to be a sharp sword, speaking the perfect will of God into this generation. Can you say amen? amen. And so, you know, 
God will put each, peop- each person's work into a fire on that great day. That fire will show whether their works is good or bad. If the fire does not destroy the work, then the builder will receive good things from God. So he's already telling you how he's going to try all your works. He's already telling you, and it is important as we build a company, as we build what God is building, that we build with the ultimate foundation, with the ultimate foundation. Because when you build with that foundation, then you receive the grace to do great and mighty things for God. I'm telling you, great and mighty things for God. Great and mighty things for God is what he has planned and put in store for you today. And all you need to do is you just need to receive it. You need, you need to receive it. You need to be a part of, of it. I know God has, you know, spoken to many people. I know there are many people on lo- online that, that this has stroke, you know, hit their heart. And it's shaking what God is doing. And let me tell you that God, today is the day that God has chosen to take things to the next level for you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Masterclass podcast. If you've enjoyed this message, subscribe for updates and all future content. For more information about Pastor Mike and Kingdom Masterclass, visit podcast.z5info.com.